Welcome to an encounter with the Spirit, Word, and Prayer through the prolific apostolic and teaching ministry of Apostle Femi Lazarus, lead pastor of Sphere of Light Church Global. It is his vision to raise God's end time on. God has not called you to prove you are the best. He has not. As a leader, you are a broker of gift and talent. So, brace up for an experience. everyone and just bless the name of the Lord. Just bless him. He deserves all gratitude. He deserves all praise. Blessed be your holy name. Lift your hands where you're standing and honor the one who lives forever and ever. Bless him. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. There's none to be compared to you. There's none like you. You are God all by yourself. And we just honor you. And we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Hallelujah. Who is excited to be in church? Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may please be seated. Thank you. So last week, we examined, we started the series, Isaac and Samuel, okay? Um, in other words, we are saying two kinds of product, okay? Two kinds of product. Um, Isaac um, was a product of a kind of waiting, and Samuel, also a product of another kind of waiting. So what we did last week was to examine the progenitors, separated Abraham and separated Elkanah, right? Good. And by the time we placed the both of them on the weighing scale, we observed that um, it is even an insult to compare. Okay? So today we want to weigh two similar individuals on the weighing scale, and that's the person of Sarah and the person of Anna. Okay? Um, but today we are not going to be going the route we went last week. What we're going to be doing this week is that I'm going to be speaking to Sarah's and I'm going to be speaking to Hannah's. I'm going to be speaking to individuals with two kinds of waiting. Is that okay? Good. So I'll be speaking to Sarah's, I'll be speaking to Hannah's. So let's turn our Bibles. Let's do a bit of comparison. Um, as we check the book of First Samuel, First Samuel, are you there? Let's start the reading from um, verse 1, chapter 1, sorry. And then we'll see where we go from there. Amen. So let's start. First Samuel, chapter number 1, all right, um, from verse 1. Now there was a certain man of Rama, of Mount Ephraim, 
And his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroam, the son of Eliu, the son of Tol, the son of Zuf, an Ephratite. And he had two wives. And the name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Penina. And Penina had children, but Anna had no children. You see, we've seen um, different kind of dust rise in this generation that we did not imagine will rise. We, we, we didn't know that a time will come that people will use the Bible to justify polygamy. So let me answer the question. And in fact, I was, what word should I use? I was shocked when one of my boys uploaded a video where I was talking out that, saying out that the Bible does not endorse polygamy. And I was shocked that the only person there who was arguing with it was a pastor. You cannot use the Bible to endorse a weakness. You can't import scriptures to justify something. The Bible has its own flow of thought. We come to that level, we don't bring it to our level. Okay? One of the ways doctrines are established in scripture is to check patterns. When God made Adam, he didn't give him two, he gave him one. That's the pattern. You go to the person of Noah, it was one. Okay? You go to Abraham, it was one. When he went to pick house girl, that's when problem came. Are you with me now? Later, you know, you check the patterns, the flow of scriptures. We don't, we don't import things to justify heresy. The Bible is clear. Is that okay now? Good. The, so, there are things that were mentioned in Bible as we read storylines. That is not God endorsing those things. But that is the Bible saying they happened. The same way it is not everything you will read in stories that God approves of, but they happened. Is that simple enough? Very important. All right? So look at it. He had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. Yes? So, verse 3. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Ophni and Phineas, the priests of the Lord, were there. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina his wife and to all her sons and daughters portions. But to Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. And adversely provoked her soul to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. All right? And he did so year by year when she went up, sorry, and as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, she, so she provoked her, therefore she wept and did not eat. Look at verse 8. Then Elkanah said to, um, then said Elkanah, her husband to her, Anna, why weep you? Why eat you not? And why is your heart grieved? Am I not better to you than ten sons? So she was, and she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed to the Lord and wept so. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your handmaid, and remember me, and not forget your handmaid, but will, but will give to your handmaid a man-child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no reason come upon his head. And it came to pass that as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Now, Anna, sorry, now Hannah, she spoke in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said to her, How long will you be drunken? Put away wine from you. And Anna answered and said, No, my Lord, I'm a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have neither drunk wine nor strong drink, but I poured out my soul to the Lord. All right, so we are seeing that, let me identify three things that was happening, okay? Um, she was waiting for something she did not have, but 
um, the other woman had what she was waiting for. Okay? And the fact that Anna had no child yet gave the other woman the reason to provoke her, to taunt her. You see, Penina was doing the exact same thing that the devil likes to do. The devil is an opportunist. There are things he wants to say to you, but you will not believe it now. So he will wait for the situation that will make you believe. Let me give you an instance. Um, let's assume that the devil really wants you to believe. Okay, let's take the case of Elijah. You, you will know that the devil has been looking for a way to afflict him and to say things that will damage his heart, things that will, you know, prick his soul. But the devil had no occasion to say that. So what the devil did was to wait for the time that Jezebel spoke some very heavy words that will open the door for him to now believe. The devil waits for people, waits for situations to get at you. Then the door is open. Then he can say the things he's always wanted to say. For instance, in the case of Adam, the moment they ate the fruit and they were both naked, when God came, he said, Who told you? that you are naked. This is not the kind of nakedness you'll be aware of by yourself. This is the kind of nakedness that you come into the consciousness through a statement. They could not... Are you with me? Are you sure? Should I stay on the surface or should I go deep a bit? All right. So, there was no way anyone... They could believe that they were naked unless that they have eaten it and then that gives them the license to now believe anything the devil is saying. The same way sin gives the devil the opportunity to say to you what he has always wanted to say. And what he has always wanted to say is the fact that God has rejected you and there's no more hope. So, the barrenness of Hannah was the opportunity that Penina had to scorn her. And you have to get used to the fact that there are things you will lack that your neighbor will have. That's life. That you are in process doesn't mean you are better than your neighbor. And it doesn't mean you are worse. You are just in process. <laughs> the reason why you need to hear what I've said again is because if the devil can't stop you from doing what is right, it will get you to be proud in the process. That is, you come out of the situation and you begin to use your waiting process as the yardstick for what you have. That is, you look at people and say, look at you. What have you gone through? Let me tell you what I have gone through in the hands of the Lord. <laughs> so that you can know where we came from. The fire that processed us is the fire that processed gold in heaven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get there tonight. Are you with me now? The moment some things are not coming on time, then you begin to hear what the devil has always wanted to tell you. You start gisting with you. You are not better than your fathers. All these Christianity things you are doing, it's a waste of time. Scam. Scam. Okay? Look at your life. What's the difference? Your brother, who is in the village, worship and mad you are. What makes you different? He has a car, you don't have. He has um, his own house, you don't have. The devil will say all manner of things. And that's why we must raise believers who are deeply rooted, who have come to know God beyond things. You must know him and judge him faithful beyond things. Beyond physical result. Getting somewhere.
Now, I want to tell you what waiting is and what waiting is not. Waiting is not just the passage of time while trusting God for something. That is, you cannot, you, it cannot be said that you have waited because time passed and certain things have not come. Are you with me? Um, are you following what I'm saying over there? The fact that the thing did not come on time doesn't mean you have waited. That doesn't mean you have waited. <laughs> First and foremost, some things takes time. If you just finish uni, um, let's. I don't want to use that. Let's assume somebody just finished a process and something has not opened up yet. You are not waiting yet now. It. I mean, do you, turn your Bibles now. Ecclesiastes three. Look at it. Ecclesiastes three, eleven and twelve. Ecclesiastes three, eleven and twelve. If you are there, say amen. Okay. Look at it. He has made everything beautiful in his time. What that simply means is that the day you plant a seed is not the day it will grow, sir. Mm? Mm. Just understand where you are in the time chain. That's it. Just understand where you are. It's not the way you plant a seed that it will grow. Some things take time, naturally. You have not started waiting. This is just the time it takes. Okay? Hello. Are you with me? Uh -huh. In the Nigeria of today, the moment you finish university, except you have serious qualifications, um, serious connections, plus the first class, or strong to one, it's, there's a slight chance <laughs> that the moment you are done, you are going to wait for a while, while they are processing this here and there. It's not waiting yet. It is just the time it takes for that thing, for that thing to crystallize. So the fact that something has not happened, don't throw yourself into a waiting room that, you see, we are the ones who are waiting on the Lord. No, this thing takes time. That's right. That's right. Oh, yes. Is it simple enough? Yes. Naturally. Okay, for instance now, when a woman goes to the hospital and finds out that she's pregnant, then imagine the woman after three months now say, ah, this baby has not come. No, this one takes nine months. And one of the things parenting has taught me is that, man, you have to be patient. First, you wait and wait and wait for the child to be born, then the child is born. Then you wait a few more months for the child to see and recognize you. You wait. Then you wait a few more months again for the child to be able to respond to you when you make some jokes. You wait. You wait for the child to sit. You wait. You wait for the child to start crawling. You wait. You wait for the child to start standing. You wait. For the child to start walking, you wait. The talk takes time small. You wait longer. For they will call the first daddy. <laughs> While that process is going on, that is not delay. That is the time it takes. You must understand the time it takes for what you are doing to crystallize. That is not delay. Is it simple enough? Yes, so that by the time you are in that process, you will not be add on yourself and feel that your world is crashing why are things not going well for me and by the way we all don't have the opportunity to start at the same point in life so some of us are going to go on a longer journey than the rest of us for instance the time it will take for the one who had parent who had everything ready for him to climb up it's even from the time it will take for the one who is starting from the bottom understand where you are starting from sir Okay? And don't compare yourself with somebody who has leverage. Some people, they are the third generation of people who are, who are climbing up in their family. You are trying to be the first generation. While you are trying to climb up, even those who gave birth to you, you have to still support them. You can't compare your life with them. What I'm saying is that, if we have, please both of you come. If we are putting these two men, alright, to run this race, please face there. Okay? And then we, we bring this one here. 
to run. And this is the destination they are running to. Okay? It will be, it will be unfair for him to think that because this one gets there first, he's faster. Listen to what I'm telling you. Sometimes somebody here can be running at 60 km per hour. And this one here is running at 200 km per hour. This one is most likely going to get there first because he has shorter distance to cover. But this one has more speed. You must understand. The fact that people... Are you following what I'm saying? Don't judge your speed by who gets there first. Check the pace you cover. Some things take time. I mean, having gone through all the things you've gone through, survive what you have survived, to come here and judge yourself and say, my life is just slow. Is that how the rest started? Who is there to support you? Who is sending you... To some, I mean, I was hearing one of the billionaires in Nigeria, one of the foremost guys who said that his uncle... Was it Donald Trump? Even said, what I said, is, is, is that borrowed him a small amount of something million dollars? Small amount. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying here? I think we need to recognize people's hard work, not just their result. Yes, sir. Mm. We must have a culture that celebrates effort also. Yes, mm. Okay? Because if we only celebrate results, people will jump process, and since the result is what we recognize, and get that result and say that effort is nothing. Yes. Are you following what I'm saying here? Yes, celebrate yourself, you have tried. Thank you, sir. Are you following what I'm saying here? Yes, so in the same light, <laughs> that's the way light is. life is. Two people can be getting married, friends, the same Saturday, across different states, but they have different leverage. You must understand your own starting point and where you are. But one thing is very certain. There is a God who gives grace. To those who wait on him. I said there is a God who gives grace to those who wait on him. You will not crash. Uh, maybe I don't have the right audience. But I say again, you will not crash. And because while you are in the process, the devil keeps reminding you where others failed. You will not stop there. You will go far ahead. You will become the first generation of excellence. Amen. You become the first generation of genuine result. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, listen to this. You will know what it means to be fulfilled in life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You won't vanish halfway like smoke. Amen. God will preserve you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, sit down for a while. One of the things God does is that while we are in that process, and some things have to take 10 years, some things have to take 20 years, some things have to take 15 years, sometimes it gives us boosters. One contact. One access. One door. Just boosters. And you discover that um, sometimes you are seeing 10 years remaining. And God just gives an advantage. And you are seeing three months to go. Oh, wow. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. God is going to give you speed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You must look forward to it. Like I said, today's Bible study is more of me ministering to those who are having two kinds of waiting. Okay? So it's not just um, us comparing, but also ministering to the spirit of those who are weary because of waiting. God gives boosters. It does. It does. It does. It does. It would have taken David, only God knows when, to get to the palace. But God said to Samuel, go to the house of Jesse. That was a booster. And sometimes the booster comes um, as an activity of the enemy. And the enemy thinks that they are destroying you, but what they don't realize is that they are pushing you faster towards your promise. Like the case of Joseph. They thought they were selling him. But Joseph said, hey, the Lord sent me ahead of you, all right, to prepare the way for you. 
He recognized that. God is giving you boosters. Yeah. One of the entry points of discouragement is that the devil is able to convince you that this is the time it will take. Your times are not in his hands. Your time are in God's hands. They are in God's hands. They are not in the hands of the devil. He cannot tell you how long it will take. Are you following what I'm saying? The situation that you are going through, the pain has opened door. I know. Many voices are coming. When, what's her name? The girl, the servant girl of Sarah. When she gave birth first, you saw what she did? She began to insult, despise her mistress. There is a very high tendency in life that when you get result early, you may not know how to talk. Okay? You may not know how to talk. You may just feel, you see, it's just about positioning. It's just about knowing how to position yourself well. Um, young ladies, just make sure that you dress well, have your makeup on, be at the right place at the right time, this, this, that. That's somebody who has no report. That thing you are talking is trash. When you find real reports, you will understand that answers to prayer when it comes to marriage goes beyond fine face. Yeah. 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 And it goes beyond beautiful Instagram pictures. God makes everything beautiful in its time. In its time. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Are you with me? Oh, People can see you and still not see you. But when the, see, the time, when the time is right, the time is not just the moment. Mm -mm. Let me, what you are seeing is time as the moment. No. What God is calling the time is the season. You can be in a season. Let me have five guys. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Can I have, Pastor Joker, please come. This is a season. Where, please stand there, just stand there, thank you. All, no, face us. All the people coming around this season are wrong. And yes, we are coming. But here is another season where the one is passing. And this is God. This one. Is the right time not because of what the clock says but because of what it brings your time comes with your people and your resources it's not the moment it's not calendar it's not Kronos it's Kairos pregnant moment if you are under pressure you see, now that all these guys are passing around this time, a time come that they will seize. That's good news if the wrong one sees. If it is not God, it is not time. Amen. Lift your hand and say again. Say, God makes all things beautiful in its time and season. Do you understand that illustration? Give Jesus a big hand. Thank you. So, it is not everybody that have a result that can have your ears. But you check the report. Hebrews 11 from verse 1 to 3. Quickly. Now look at the Hebrews 11 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtain a good what? A report. So I, I think I've shared this story before. Um, I was in GSS 1 or so. I mean, when I left primary school, I used to try. But when I got to secondary school, I stopped trying. Okay? Somehow, I think I came 31st. No, 33 out of about 35 or 36. (laughs) 
<laughs> Amen. Are you here? So, pay attention to this illustration. So, I, I was, I, I didn't know how I was going to take the report card home. My dad would check it. And you tell him that after paying all the amount of money they paid for school fees, this is what you can come with. So I thought to myself, this is dirty thought. Let me cancel one third. <laughs> and I did. I canceled, I just got um, TPEX. And I just erased one three, then I, I just made it in a way that it will blend so that all my dad needed to do was to turn the report card the other side. <laughs> <laughs> there the real report was glaring. <laughs> Experience though. <laughs> so now hold on a minute. So <laughs> but what I did not know was that I was more concerned about the result as thought. But there are many reports that makes the result valid. For instance, how can you have read in math, read in English, read in elementary science, read here, and read in all those things, then suddenly you have thought. In the same light, how can you have red in patience, red in character development, rest in prayer, red in all that, and yet have the result? The report of the things you passed are more important than the ultimate result. While waiting, were you patient? Did you become more kind? Did you learn to be more loving? Did you learn prayer? Did you learn fasting? Did you learn the word? It is not just about the result. There are many reports that hearts up to give us the result. So there are things that God wants us to carry while we're in process. Say, I hear. Anywhere there is genuine waiting. There will be character. Nothing is more humbling than doing everything you know to do and not seeing the result you want to see. Ah! It's humbling. It's humbling. It's humbling. One of my, I think we're having a minister's conversation. I just want to chip this in because I know that I have a special calling to ministers and to raise leaders, you know. So one of my boys was asking me, I said, when you pastor a church and you are doing everything you know to do, and the church is not growing. Nothing is responding. What else do you do? Well, sometimes you are doing the right things, but those right things must be done for a period of time. You are pouring water on the seed you have sown. Nothing is growing. You are doing the right thing. Wait. There's a time it will take. Hello. It's not eat and run. It takes time. takes time. And sometimes, um, till I say this, let me say it. Sometimes the answer to growth is not with you. Let me tell you something. When this church a certain season last year. Somebody just attended this church. We had a, I mean, I've missed those kind of settings. We need to have it again soon. After service, we just had lunch together as church. 
and we're talking. And a guy came to church. And the guy said to me, he said, I'm hearing your sermon. He said, it's like you don't know. He said, the whole city is coming to your church. He said, what I'm seeing here, I don't think you know what's going on on the street. Very soon, you will have problem with space. I mean, when they say somebody gives you OT, that guy brought that. I heard him, and I heard God as he spoke. Jethro may not be a pastor, yeah. but if a pastor will succeed, you will need to hear Jethro. Yeah. Yeah. Are you following what I'm saying? Yeah. It is not everything that you see in the Bible. I read books on management. I read books on administration. I read books on businesses. I read books on governance. All right. When you get those, let me leave it. Are you following what I'm saying? <laughs> because let me show you a few things. While you are in the process for things to happen, understand that there are tests you must pass. And they mean so much to God. And they must mean so much to you. It is not enough that time is passing. Time can pass only to be wasted. What did I say? Time can pass only to be wasted. It is not passage of time. It is you getting right what God needs you to get right. Sometimes, in fact, many times, God is not the one occasioning delay, but is helping you take advantage of it. When the devil thinks they are afflicting you, they don't know that they, the devil oftentimes make the plans of God come to pass fast because he has darkened wisdom. So he doesn't know. He thinks they are afflicting you, Somebody, in fact, one time when David was running from Absalom, and I'm going to see, teach about David and Absalom dealing with the root of bitterness. It's a topic I'm going to teach soon. Okay? The guy saw David was running from his son. David, the sweet Samus of Israel, the lion himself, was running from Absalom. The guy stood from afar and was throwing stones at David was insulting, calling him names. He said, this, this, is God is doing this to you because of what you did to the house of Saul. Abner and Joab are men that will not have to throw a spear twice. You understand what I'm saying? These are not normal guys. They don't, they don't need to throw a sword. Even if they do like this, the head is off. The guy said, let me fall on him. David said, no, allow him. Maybe God will hear him and look on my afflictions. I was hearing one of the pastors I respect so much. I think I shared this in Ibadan. And they asked him, how do you deal with offense? He said, and that's the most profound answer I've seen. He said, I, take, I see the sovereign will of God in everything. That is, if you look at me and begin to insult me and call me names, he said, I will just conclude in my heart that there's something God wants to deal with in my life has allowed you to do this to me. So he gave an example. He said, if you look at even David, he said when Saul was trying to kill David, he said that was God trying to help David to deal with certain things. Sometimes the time you were sane is the times the enemies were after you. And he said, he said what Saul could, what could not be dealt with in David then was what still went after Bathsheba and killed Uriah. Don't be quick to remove every stain. Sometimes it's God saying, take note. There's pride here. There's anger here. There's overconfidence here. Say, this is it. Okay? Do you understand what I'm saying? Let me tell you, in all honesty, some things are painful. But we grow. Grow. We just see through the smoke screens and understand. Okay? And understand. There are times that people do things to me. And I look at them. And I say, no, you, you are not this wicked. No, you are not. You can't be. This is the devil who hates me, trying to afflict me through you. 
Okay? I know you. I know who you are. And I know the person behind. You know the devil can wear pull like suit. And when they have done what they are doing, they now wonder, did I just do this? Yes, they did. But it's not them, it's the devil. If you, if you don't see life this way, you will play into the hands of the devil and you'll be easily angered. I'm telling you, there are times you get to where your blessing is. The devil just wants to use a very funny person to frustrate you. Say, I refuse to be frustrated. I refuse to be frustrated. Say it again, I refuse to be frustrated. How do I walk into a place, an organization, to get something done? Okay? And somebody, somebody just start looking at me and look at me and look at me. Yet to, so. How is that my problem? No. How is that my problem? Have I urinated on my body? No. Am I your headache? No. Whatever it is, I'm not the victim. I'm just a beneficiary of your goodwill. I have five minutes to spend there. I will go. I'm not the victim. See, you must learn how to interpret life. <laughs> if not, the devil will get you. But in this social media world, you know, you know <laughs> somebody asked me, I said, how do you pastors deal with media criticism? Sometimes you say something plain. Somebody will bring it from <laughs> another angle. <laughs> What do you do? I'm not the victim. You must learn how to set your face like a flint and keep doing the things you have to do. When you are at the top, you are the topic. Yes, sir. Continue. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You don't have to pause to answer everybody. And answer every You will drain yourself. Keep the energy. Put it on the progress. Think. At the level that God is bringing you to, you can't be thinking like a pauper. You have to think well. Think as one who is ministering to the world. Understand the devil will come at you at that level. Wake up! Oh, yes. Oh, yes. If you are not being criticized, you are not doing enough. One of the announcements that you are beginning to try is that you'll be cancelled. Tell anybody they try. <laughs> Amen. Is somebody following what I'm saying here? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Let's do a bit of comparison. Hmm? Are you with me? Yes, sir. What, how do we describe the waiting of Hannah and the waiting of Sarah? Hannah was that woman who her husband has another wife and their children and for some reasons the Bible didn't seem to give us a clue about our age but from the description it didn't look as though the Bible was describing a couple that were advanced okay because the kids of Penina were referred to as children maybe two boys two girls maybe three boys one two girls all right but we know that Somehow, um, these this still seem to look like young couples. Okay? And Anna kept, they kept going to Shiloh. The husband was saying, I'm better than 10,000 children to you. Like I said at that time, scam. <laughs> okay? Um, we don't know, maybe the guy could still go out and get more wives. <laughs> okay? Because he was not in the waiting process. If you link this to last week, he was not waiting. It was just Anna that was waiting. Okay? Um, some other time I'm going to bring this out in the subject of marriage. Because you win the battle faster when it is two going through it, not one. Okay? So she had to go and cry out to God. And she gave birth. But in the case of Sarah, as a matter of fact, the Bible had to give us an hint that it had ceased to be with her after the manner of women. Let's look at it. Genesis. All right? Turn your Bibles there. The book of Genesis, chapter number 18. Let's start reading from Genesis 18. Let's start reading from verse 6. Genesis 18, let's start reading from verse 6. 
And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of, of fine meal. Knead it and make cakes on the earth. And Abraham ran to the head and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it to a young man. And he hurried to dress it. And he took the butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree and they did it. I don't know what kind of meekness this is. How will the old Abraham be standing? If he gets, please be eating, sir. That's the lifestyle they built. And they said to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return to you according to this time of life. And see, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now, Abraham and Sarah were old and stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Meaning that this prophecy was believable when she was still menstruating. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure? My Lord, being old also. You know, there is a certain age, people just say, day or day. You know what that means? Where is Godwin? I was going to poke him now, but he's not here. Okay. Now you there today. <laughs> okay. Are you, do you understand what that means? Okay. You don't. I know you don't understand. That's true. This, all of you here are married men, are you? <laughs> okay. See, this guy is old. Nobody's touching anybody anymore. So how will these things be? Hope you know. To understand the power of prophecy, we will still get to Genesis 20. Are you with me? Yes, sir. And see a king pick Sarah, thinking she was a young girl. Yes, <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? If Sarah at 80 plus, Somebody can be crushing on her. How old are you? <laughs> that you are saying nobody see me. Show that nonsense and move on. Amen. She laughed within herself. So for Sarah, the testimony that she needs, the uh, uh, body, uh, anatomical configuration contradicts it. As far as the science of the human body is concerned, it was too late. For Hannah, it was still possible. So what I'm saying is, if you put a Sarah and an Hannah side by side, 40 years ago, they were still both waiting at the same level. 40 years later, the child of Hannah is already 30-something years. Sarah is still waiting. And that's when the pain becomes more. That there are people that you know you were all in the waiting room till they all left, and you are the only one left there. And sometimes it looks as though the body of theology we have seems to demonize people that don't get result on time. That there's something you are not doing right. I am saying you can do everything right, but yet the time has not come. It can happen. So, this is where we get to the point where waiting is beginning to make no more sense. This is now not making sense. We thought we were joking. We thought we were just trying to do some things. If this is a joke, it has to stop now. This is no longer making any sense. This is nonsense. I'm done. I'm tired. And you know the funny thing? is that while you are in this process, you will also see people 
who don't pray in tongues, who don't read the Bible, who don't fast, who are not workers in church, who are not born again Christians, who don't have your consecration, get the things you want without even waiting on God. So if we say that, hey, look at this testimony, this testimony, you know, this are. This testimony, look at this testimony. This is the kind of testimony you get when you are a faithful steward in this house. Now, so it they happen. Now, so God they do them. It is also happening outside for those who don't even know Jesus. Talk less of being steward. How do we balance it? These things are not balanced. Are you aware that as we celebrate... 100 babies, God answer people, they are also doing so in some shrines. The difference is, those who wait on God will not inherit shame. When God gives, He protects what He gives. He backs up what He gives. Now, how many of you have seen that before? That, look at people who are not even in Christians. Look at them. They have the results we don't have. They have the results. Look at them. It looks like it's only Christians that are in waiting process sometimes. It's, it's like, let me just go outside the world, enjoy myself, then come back, and I don't pass that process. I don't know if you have seen that happening before. You see people outside. They're not born again people. They are not, and they're not waiting. Have you seen that before? Yes. But do you know you are wrong? You are wrong. Let me show you something. The moment waiting gets to a level, the devil convinces you. What he does is that he paints a single story. Hey, are you following what I'm saying? The devil paints a single story and shows you only one side of the divide. Look at those outside. They get the things that you praying don't get. But then they die too. He won't show you that. Yeah. Yeah. I shared the story of two boys who went to come, who, um, um, perform rituals. And they went to a car park. We we're going to wash a car. Okay? They were discussing. The father of one of my friends was inside his own car. They didn't know somebody was there. And they were, one was asking the other one, what did Baba say you should do? He said, Baba said I should buy akara. If you don't know what that means, that's beans cake, fried beans cake. All right? And then he said he should pour it on the road. On the road. Yes? He said he should wait for a car to match it, then bring what is left. So the car matched it, he took what was left to the man. That was what they used to perform the ritual. And the condition for that money was that the way the car matched this beans cake, this is the way a car will match your head when time comes to die. What is beautiful about what the devil gives? He will not show you that. He will show you the shiny aspect. He will give you the impression that look at what is happening. Uh, see as then they enjoy their lives. All this Christian thing will now they carry for head. Where they end. See girls where they go club on Saturday night. And they find better men. But then they use them for a ritual too. It is those who have gone through that life that can tell you the pain they live life with, and the regret that comes. Yeah. The fact that you have not been there doesn't mean you should envy it. You only have an aspect to the story, and the one who is painting it is the one who wants to get you there. The devil himself, he wants you messed up. There's nothing there. We go to party, dance, dance, dance. Say, devil's basket, you, I don't know if that's the rain. <laughs> now there we stop. Pick, 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 Conde. You look like you know what's going on. <laughs> pick, 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 pick. You don't, having done all those things, it is superfluity of naughtiness. A well you dig, you won't touch water. You carry this girl, no satisfaction. Another one, another one, another one, and the pattern continues and discover that the one whose life is being spent is you. 
The devil tries to give believers the impression that you are a cake. You are in church, hearing the word. Some of you are married. Your children are here, learning the ways of God. But you know you have colleagues who have come back from work. Now that it's public holiday, they don't bath, put small perfume, don't go covum, drink small gouda, sap them around. The children are starving at home. The wife is looking like a shadow of herself. The girls that is liking there, he will not buy the same clothes for his wife. The children grow up to hate the kind of father that he is. You are in the right place, doing the right things at the right time. You are not backward because you are serving God. You are not. This is how to catch real fun, to be in the presence of our maker and learn how he designed our lives to function. This is what we do. You know, I went for myself and my friends. We went for, well, maybe a vacation, just a time. It was not really a retreat, just to, we've been walking, let's just rest. Okay? People were living for different countries and we might not know when we'll be together again. So let's just rest. So we were, we were um, in a place. Let me just put it a place. Okay? And um, the owner of this facility is a billionaire. All right? So the son was there. And one time the guy got confused. And I was like, you guys have been here for some days. On a day here, fine guys, yes. No girls, no, no girls. No drinking, no, no drinking. We know they don't. He said, how are you guys now catching fun? Come, let's show you how we catch real fun. What we are doing is not boring. If it is club, I know what it means to go there. You go stand throughout. Now church day, they sit down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying now? You stand. You drink. You don't even know where your car key is again. But when we leave this place, we are more charged. Pumped up to face life. We are not behind because we are in church. This is where it is happening. We teach the world how to catch real fun. We are not behind. We don't copy them. There's a lot they should learn from us. Look at the peace we have. Yeah. Hey, one imperial bottle there. They carry this. This one don't go borrow money. You say bring two, bring two. Some girls will carry the light, carry the thing. What? The bottle that you buy for, how would you sit down to drink a bottle of drink for three point something million? Just because they will ail you. And you know those hype man. <laughs> who get Camry? Men know they talk. I like range over there. Hey, who? And you are here, just starting your life. Pressure want to kill you. If they're using Phoenix, no raise your phone, the iPhone there. Yeah. <laughs> Pressure wants to finish you. Oh my God. But here we are in God's presence. No discrimination, nothing. This is where it is happening. This is where it is happening. This is where it is happening. Hallelujah. Sometimes you meet people like this and they want to give you the impression that why are you so backward? Am I? If you don't know where you are, you'll be confused. Am I really? <laughs> so, um, let me just say this. One of my boys asked me, said, he was, he was following me everywhere. So he said, Apostle, I, I noticed that since you've been around, you've sown seed here of thousands of pounds. I said, yes. I said, number one, I like to give. Number two, I like to shame the devil. You know how many years the devil take convince me that because I refused to go to the UK early, 
to London University of Tropical Medicine that I failed. I like to show the devil. I don't fail. I might not be in front, but I wasn't failing. God was preparing something. You are too quick to conclude. You are too quick. There are things that will not come in the time that they make sense. That's the truth. That's the kind of person that Sarah was. It, 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 it won't come in time that it makes sense. And you have to learn how to deal with the seasons of depravity. Because if you get your conclusions wrong, you may not come out. Maybe one of these days, I'm going to tell you the year I was able to buy my first brand new suit as a pastor in a boutique. If I say it, you'll be shocked. Somebody just said, one time somebody came to meet me and said, Hi, I want to borrow your suit. Um, I've been nominated as men in suit, um, <laughs> man in suit, for so and so wedding. So I saw that you have many suits. Now, one suit I get, I have a friend who is a photographer. He will sit down that one suit for different poster and use Photoshop to change the color. <laughs> so I said, This is the suit. Join them for the wedding. If you want, after the wedding, we use Photoshop, change the color. <laughs> and that suit, I went for my cousin's wedding, who happened to be a banker. And as far as he was concerned, he had used all the money on that suit. I said, I can start from where you stopped. And I took that suit, and that suit still did another two to three years with me. By the time I was done, I gave it to one of our pastors <laughs> into doing one two years. <laughs> when he finished, he give another junior pastor. <laughs> so I now went to meet that one. Give me this suit. The time has come for deliverance. <laughs> Whether we they wear suit then or we know they wear, you know, stop the message. Yeah. No, stop the message. You know, I was in Lekki. Permit me to be a bit vain. And I went to one of my boys. I call them my boys, not because they are my boys, like the way we relate. They're friends. Very close. I'm a very real guy. You know me very well. You know that. But, so we went there. We we're going to buy some suit. So, it was one pain. Then we just looked at each other and remembered that years back, I went to Koza. You know Koza? You know get money. I went to Lagos, JJ, to go and do apostolic ministry. I said, let's go to Koza. Excellent church. Where I sit down, the devil just remind me, say, Lazarus. <laughs> I said, here I am. He said, look at the legs of your age mates. I look to the right. What? Oxford, Brooks, nice shoes. I don't know past Oxford and Brooks. I looked at that and it was like every clean. Say, see your leg. I looked at my leg. Ah. I folded my leg under the chair. When they call first timers, I no go. Before they would think I needed charity, I no go. So after the service, I got angry. I told the boy, say, but see you, you see, you dress well, you don't tell me. <laughs> so after the service, I said, I'm angry. Let's go now. Try and buy shoes. Me. Maybe say ministry just contributes more change. Say, as you go, God will go with you. You are do ministry. I vex. I say, let's go and buy a shoe. So I pick one shoe. I said, how much is this shoe? I want to buy this shoe. The guy said, um, I think then he said, 38,000. God angry, what do you mean? What? This Lagos, that's how you pull out. You, 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 you just want to force. Is it because I gave you? 
The guy said, Apostle, calm down. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. Calm down. <laughs> so he now called me and said, actually, actually. He said, this shoe actually is around that price. I said, the last time I bought shoe ever was one, two. <laughs> so I had a feel, say, maybe now, five, two, five. <laughs> Max. And I said, this one that you are wearing, how much is this? Say, ah, this one. Say, sir, I bought it around 37,000. <laughs> really? When I was going to get married, towards my wedding, I bought about 12 shoes. They said, why are you buying shoes? I said, I'm hungry. I, I want to show the devil. But devil, your head is not correct. You... <laughs> So we were together again at the shop in Lekki. And then we we're paying certain amounts for some collections. Then we remembered. Ah. It will not always remain the same. Ah. Will not. Things change, sir. But mind you, even if things have not changed, we'll still be on this path. You must understand that balance. Yes, still be on this path. Praise God. Don't, don't kill yourself because things have not changed yet. There was a time in my life that if they told me that a time will ever come that I will have 10,000 naira balance in my account, not doing anything, I will add you. That 10K, the way my brain was wired, when money comes, you, ah, quickly, quickly, you look at devil, he's out there, quickly, spend it, spend it. But it only came to pass. It won't wait forever. It doesn't matter how much we, we, we prophesy, change, receive. If you are in that kind of season, that is where you are. But there's a flow of time. Are you following what I'm saying here? There's a flow of time. I see God giving you speed. And helping you. In the name of Jesus. I see God helping you. In the name of Jesus. It's so beautiful when those you have struggled together are still by your side when things change. And they can remember when what we are seeing was just a word of prophecy and we're open. Things will change. In the name of Jesus. Things are changing. In the name of Jesus. Tell yourself, I refuse to be discouraged. Say it again loud and clear. I refuse to be discouraged. Say it loud and clear. I refuse to be discouraged. And usually, it becomes very, very frustrating when what you are waiting for to happen in your life is happening in different lives. For Sarah, she was seeing Agar. For Hannah, she was seeing Penina. And sometimes they are constant reminder that you might be failing. But maybe that's not true. I said maybe that's not true. Now, look at this. What do you do when the time frame that what you are waiting for will make sense in is passing. Let me explain. There's an average age that menopause kicks in. You know is waiting before that age for a child, for this and all that. Like, okay, we are still within time frame. It's making sense. But now, you're about to celebrate your birthday. And that birthday marks the season. From what you have read medically, that this is the season that menopause may likely start kicking in. If care is not taken, and God has been tempted to raise this alarm, 
as you begin to celebrate your birthdays, it will not be seasons of joy, but seasons of depression. Because the birthday seems to be reminding you that time is not on your side. There comes a time that your birthday is a, new, is a constant reminder to the fact that something is going. And if care is not taken, every time you get close to your birthday, you are depressed. You won't get results that way. You won't get results that way. Let me show you a scripture. Joel chapter number 1. Joel chapter number 1. If you are there, say amen. Okay. Let's start reading from verse 8. Joel 1.8. If you are there, say amen. Look at this. Lament like a virgin greeted with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. The meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests, the Lord's ministers, mourn. The field is wasted and the land mourns. For the corn is wasted, the new wine is dried up, the oil languishes. Be you ashamed, O you farmers, howl, O you vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished. The vine is dried up, and the fig tree languishes. The pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, the apple tree, even all the trees of the field is withered, because joy is withered from the sons of men. When we say rejoice, it is not a church slogan. It is actually a fetcher. The moment, listen to what I'm saying. The moment your joy dries up, your condition will dry up. Let me tell you, as you keep marking seasons that should be seasons of joy, and instead of you rejoicing, you keep crying and saying, now, another time, this has not come. You have just marked the register to come again next year till you pass that test. The Bible is saying, you are complaining, everything is dried. The palm tree, the palm tree is dried, the pomegranate tree is dried, the apple tree is dried, all things are withered. This is dry. He said, it is only happening because joy has left you. When was the last time you sat down, despite the fact that you don't have everything you needed, and rejoiced? When was the last time you look at the things that God has done, regardless of what is yet to happen? And you say, I just want to thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. When was the last time? Sometimes we make requests like we're asking the God who is not responsible. Like the irresponsible one. Let's ask him. If no cuckoo ask him, you don't know if he forgets us for him. And you confront God like one who has never... Let me ask you a question. Has God been good at least once? Yes, sir. Are you aware that the fact that you are here and talking is a proof of his goodness? Yes. When was the last time you rejoiced, even when your joy was not full? You know you can have joy and not rejoice. Like this, you say it is on my inside, but you did not manifest it. Let me tell you. Go and check. Every miracle that has to do with multiplication, most times there is always a template of joy and thanksgiving. When Jesus saw three loaves of bread, two fishes, he did not say, what nonsense, now we are stranded. Yeah, how do you? No, no. He gave thanks. Oh, Father, thank you for a new age. I'm a lady, 33, no man has come. Thank you because you have made me wonderfully well and beautifully well. I know my David is coming. The guy, if you know, be David, if you look man. Every time you rejoice, you get closer to your breakthrough. You cannot get it by complaining. Having tried everything else, switch to what? Joy. Kenneth, Bishop, um, Kenneth Copeland asked Bishop Oedipo, 
and said, we taught you faith. said, but the results we are seeing here, how do you get all these people to be in one place? And you know what he said? He said, I danced them in. Let me tell you something. I don't know if I've said this publicly before, but at a certain period of my life, I went to lock myself, and I do that every now and then. I just take my bag, pick my things, go out of the house, lock myself for days, maybe in the guest house, fast, pray, seek God, dot, write things. I needed answers as to how church can grow. God told me. He said there are three ingredients you will find in any church that will grow. Number one, joy, unspeakable, full of glory. Go back and create an atmosphere of joy. What you are not rejoicing over cannot multiply. That is the reason why we praise God the way we do in this house. So when we are rejoicing, we are not saying that we have all that we need. But we are saying we recognize the one before whom we are dancing. We recognize. That was what God found in David. David was dancing almost naked. I know say we'll start with a pool clothes. But he was dancing. Mike and Saddam has the two sports girl now. So, yeah, look at this guy. Look at this guy. See the way he dances. This one says he's king. Look at you. You are dancing like miserable men in Israel. David said, I am dancing before the God who chose me before your father. Very heavy. This is what I was doing when God found me above your father. And God said, the womb of Micah, short. Anywhere you despise joy and gratitude, there's barrenness. I want to give us some two, three minutes to rejoice this morning. Hey, look at the way you are rejoicing. We give you praise, Jesus. We bless your holy name. Things may not be where we want them to be, but we rejoice in you regardless. We bless you from the depth of our hearts. We thank you because you are the good God. We may not have all the answers, but we rejoice in the Lord. I may not have all the answers, I may not have it figured out. I may not know what to eat tonight, but I choose to rejoice. I choose to rejoice. It is with joy we draw from the wealth of salvation. We choose to rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love what the Bible says in Psalms 100. It says to make a joyful noise to the Lord. Yes. This is what we do. Hallelujah. Now, I've shown you several times. Um, the who, who we are used to it. Because the word make there is the word to invent, is the word to create. You see, whenever there's joy, three things happen. Number one, there's shouting. Number two, there is dancing. Number three, there's laughter. You can never somebody who is joyful. Shut him up. Say, I, I, I'm, I'm rejoicing. <laughs> what are you doing? Say, mm. that, that's how I rejoice. I May I know this too? Rejoice, somebody! Hey! Amen. Now, let me show you a scripture. We practice this again. Are you with me? Job chapter number five. 
Job chapter number 5, from verse 21 and 22. I love the fact that the instrumentalists are there. We're going to raise a sound. This is Bible study. We're going to raise a sound and rejoice. Amen. And bless God from... I, you see, one of the things that happens when there's joy is that that's when you can see clearly. Yes, you just know that. You see, listen. Have you been in that situation whereby things have not changed physically, but you know, I am close. Just know. I'm, I'm, I'm close to it. I'm close to it. Yeah. Be more loyal to that perception than all the external conditions. Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm getting there. Look at what it says. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the destruction. When... So I face many things. I'm no longer afraid of anything. Be afraid. Look at verse 22. At destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. Neither shall thou be afraid of. Are you following what I'm saying? That is, you are hearing people panicking, saying this, 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 and that. What you are doing as a way of responding, as a spiritual man, is that you are what? Laughing. Listen, oh. Nobody, you know, I've told you. This one that I used to think that everybody's looking at everybody, nobody's looking at you. Wait, wait. People get issue. Huh? Everybody's looking at themselves. Mind your business. For like five minutes, can we raise some sounds? Huh? Can we raise some sound? Come up, come up, come up. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. Let's have as many praisers and dancers as we can. Oh, yeah, I love this. I'm going to be a place. I'm going to be a place. 
Bible said it is, we have the covenant of grace. I want us in the next few seconds, get crazy, get crazy tonight. Anything, carry something, carry something. I separate it. Oh, yeah, 
look for neighbor, say neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. The way your neighbor is looking, say neighbor. Say neighbor. Ask your neighbor, say where are you from? Or you answer your neighbor. Ask your neighbor, say can you dance your language dance? Hear me, hear me. The way you dance tonight will determine your blessing though. If you dance more than your neighbor, your blessing will be higher. Are you ready? If you can hear me, shout hallelujah. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, let me fall in your head and Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Now, listen. While we're praising and dancing, God said to announce, there are different people connecting from different parts of the world. He said to announce that I have rolled away the siege of death. That is the word of the Lord. And he said to tell you, I am starting a new thing. And I am doing this in my sovereign will as God. He said, I am the Lord and no one can question me. No one can stop what I do. He said, because you have praised me despite your pain. He said, I will take away your sorrows and give you a new season. That is the word of the Lord. A new season is here. A new season is here. A new season is here. You may not hear the sound of the rain, but the ditch will be filled with water. Noiseless triumph. Noiseless breakthroughs. In the name of Jesus. It is a new day.
Who is like unto thee, O Lord? Who is like unto thee? Glorious in holiness, fearful in praise. You do wonders, you perform miracles. You raise the poor and the beggar from the dunghill and set them among the princes. You are God and there is none else. To you we have come to lift our hands in praise. And we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Because we know dryness is over. A new season is here. And we rejoice in your name. For you are the hope of our salvation. We thank you, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. Behold, all things are passed away. And all things are new. This is how we fetch. It is with joy that we draw from the wells of salvation. We give you praise. Let's put our hands together. Now, I want us to do something very prophetic. We walk up to five people and say congratulations to you. of the Lord the things you have struggled to put together the things you have struggled to do you have entered into a season where the things that used to cost you stress becomes child's play he said watch out for the covenant of ease that I've made with you. Some things that look so far like it will take time before you get there. The Lord said, I'm shrinking time for you. And the Lord said to tell someone, behold, you have come to the face where I will cause your voice to be heard. And all who hear you will know that I'm speaking through you. It is a new season, beloved. Can, can, can you tell it in the atmosphere? Can you, can, you, can you see it? It's a new season. Thank you, Lord. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. You are waiting for something. Rejoice because it is here. We bless the name of the Lord. Let me tell you what is happening. It's a new dispatch of angels. New, new dispatch. In different places, new release. I'm telling you, new release, new dispatch of angels taking their formations, entering into situations. And God, listen, listen, listen. If there's a word for tonight, the word is God has responded. That is the word. God has responded. That is the word. God has responded. That is the word. He has responded. He has responded. That is the word. God has responded. When they ask you, listen to me. Listen to me. When they ask you what happened in church tonight, the answer is God has responded. Because he has. We rejoice in your name. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Be on your feet like men of war and rejoice. Amen. See, 
This kind of atmosphere is not man-made. This is what you have when God responds. Amen. We give you praise, Jesus. We give you praise. Hi there. God is raising for himself an end-time army. And this is the mandate that he has given to us. Truly, the harvest is plenteous, but we need you on board as a laborer. This is a call to partner with what God is doing in this great house. To become a monthly partner with us at Sphere of Light Church and Femme Lazarus Apostolic Ministries Ecumenical, can you reach us via the number plus 234-903-095-9735. To give an offering or to sow a seed, can you make use of these account details being displayed? The gospel of Jesus is spreading. Thank you for being a part of it.